Sarah Montabano is a contributor um, with Young Voices and an education writer. When you see that kind of footage and just the emptiness of it, and you know exactly what's happening to our kids across America, when you think about education in crisis, what comes to mind? And welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I really am concerned that children are being fundamentally hurt by this period of several years uh, in masks and online learning, and we're not seeing things going back to normal anytime soon. Uh, just recently, California's Governor Newsom uh, mandated the COVID vaccine for 7th through 12th graders, which I think is really disappointing. Um, and these schools are going to be requiring masks for a very long time. Uh, and it's been a whole year since students have been able to go back to their classrooms. Uh, and I just, I see so many learning losses from this period. You know, you know um, Sarah, it seems as though we have a sharp contrast in red and blue states when it does come to education. While schools in red states, believe it or not, are wide open. In blue states, many schools are still virtual and mask wearing, as you mentioned, is required and mandatory. And so what do you think the impact that this will have on our children in the long run? Um, and is there any, any light at the end of the tunnel if this does, doesn't change? Absolutely. So I think the children in blue states that are going to have to be uh, masked to be, stay in public schools, uh, these children are going to have a lot of social and developmental problems that I think we're already starting to see. It's really hard to empathize pe with people if you can't see their face. Um, and I think one of those really promising options is um, first talking to the principals, talking to the school boards, uh, trying to make it clear that this is not the desire of the public. Um, but failing that, it's really important to revoke your sanction from these schools and to take your child into an alternative education option uh, like homeschooling or charter schools or private schools that don't have to abide by these restrictions that are at this point rather asinine. Who benefits from this? I think what we can see, and this is a very, <laughs> this is very apparent in the LA Unified School District, uh, that the teachers unions really enjoy not having to go into schools. Uh, they really enjoy having lowered standards that make it easier for them to pass kids through. Um, and it's certainly not the children and the parents that are benefiting. There are some parents that do want to keep their kids out of school. Uh, but I think that would be really hard to justify after more than a year. And the fact that kids are relatively low risk for COVID still, even if we're talking about the Delta variant. Um, and so I think it's really teachers unions that want to delay public school reopening and um, keep things online. Talk, talk about the, the real cost to uh, the larger society five, 10, 15 years from now, when you really see the true impact of all this? Absolutely. I think what we're really going to see is that these standards that are lowered once for COVID are going to stay lower. We've already seen great inflation where students are getting A's that really shouldn't be. Um, we are also seeing that people just don't have a general knowledge of civics. In 2018, only 26% of respondents to a survey could actually identify the three branches of government. Um, and I think that's only going to get worse when children are online, they're distracted, they're distractible, and they're just not going to turn into functional adults. And as I said, being masked for most of your developmental years is going to be extremely harmful. Um. You know, I, I just read a report today where a school has decided that it will no longer give their kids elves because it, it, it affects the, mor the morality of the school, affects their self-worth and self-esteem. And, and, and I'm asking myself, who are you really hurting in the long run? You think you're doing the kids a favor by refusing to fail them and giving them something they have not earned? Yeah. 
I really don't think that's a good way to go. I think that teaches children that all they have to do is show up and that they get the credit. Um, I think that's a really damaging aspect in today's workplace where they really haven't had to struggle with something to master it. Um, and it's just, it's damaging to see people pass through the system, graduating with their high school diplomas and not understanding how to read or do basic math. Um, I, it does nobody any favors to give A's to children with who really deserve an F. You know, uh, it is no question that our children are failing and falling behind in nearly every metric compared to other developed countries. Um, this is a woeful result for us. Uh, we had this issue before the pandemic. We have this issue now. You know, it's certainly going to have an impact on the economy. And, and also, the one thing that we don't talk about enough uh, is the real um, mental state of a lot of these kids. Um, the severity of this pandemic and them being locked down, um, the, 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 the importance of them being able to socialize with other students. They go to the school, they realize they can't catch up, they're falling behind. The parents bring in tutors, tutors are not working. And sometimes um, parents cannot afford the tutors. And even online, one of the things that we don't talk about enough is not everyone has broadband. Not, parents are not savvy to operate the internet. So when there's a, it disconnects, they don't know how to connect it back again. Could kids leave, lose entire losing sessions and, and, and they fall to find themselves getting way behind. They live in situations that are already hostile, five or 10 kids in each house. Sometimes they don't even know who the parent is. Some of the parents have died from COVID-19. Some of them are in the hospital. The school has no idea that there's no parent in the household. It's just truly a chaotic situation. Absolutely. It's really disheartening to see online learning being pushed on students that can't do it for some reason or, or parents aren't in the house to do it. There are a substantial number of students that dropped off the radar in March 2020 and teachers don't know where they are. They don't know. They haven't been logging into their Zoom classes, perhaps because they can't. Uh, and that's going to be really, really damaging. And that's children who have, have no activity during the day, that they aren't being socialized uh, with other students. Um, absolutely. It's a major problem. Logan, uh, your thoughts on what you're hearing? You're a parent. Your kids have gone through the school system. You have grandkids that are about to go through the school system. What are your thoughts as a parent? As a parent? How do you make the adjustments? Armstrong, I have two touch points right now. My grandchildren were going to school in New York, they were going to elementary school at a suburban uh, school right outside of New York City. Uh, and last year, they were, they missed about two thirds of the days uh, of school. They did have Zoom. And then they also had, when they started to have schools, they had it part time uh, when they would appear in person, but they'd have to wear masks. And they all, they all hated the mask. They thought the mask was ridiculous. My new touch point is that over the summer, my son and his family moved to Florida where they don't have some of these restrictions. And it's, a, it's sort of like a, a, no pun intended, a breath of fresh air, uh, you know, when you don't have to have a mask on all the time. Uh, but one other point I like to make is that I recall when I was in uh, elementary school uh, back in the 1950s. And when somebody got the chicken pox or the measles, uh, the parents often said, let's get those kids exposed, invite them over and play so that the kids become can, can become naturally immunized. Now, that may have been a, a primitive way uh, for, for kids getting immunized, uh, but uh, it really sort of reflected the fact that uh, kids, there, there are alternative ways to solving the problems. It, the, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to get COVID. Uh, it's the worst thing in the world if you are in a class of people that has compromised health. But if you're not in that class, and usually young children are not, uh, I, don't, I do not understand why uh, what was good for my generation 
50 years ago, 60 years ago, uh, is not good for this generation. Uh, you know, you, you catch the disease, uh, you build up the immunities, and then you're set for life. Um, these, Logan, as an entrepreneur, a businessman, what is the real pack, impact on the economy? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is the real I'm impact on the future economy? The impact of what? Of this lack of education, all these issues, what impact will it have on the U.S. economy? Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be horrible. Uh, we are already behind in the United States in terms of our educational standards. One of the things I think people are not looking at is the fact that there's a crisis brewing in our uh, college system, our university system, because there are approximately two women in college for every male in college. Uh, that, you know, for some reason, uh, males have not done well in college, uh, rather in, in, in school over the past, uh, you know, 20 years. Uh, you know, we've put a lot of emphasis on female uh, and, and, and women getting through the educational system. We have special programs but I think one of the biggest problems that we have is the, uh, the, the fact that men are not getting the kind of higher education where we're going to need that in the future for everybody to have a higher education. There's many people that, uh, you know, that can take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, and, and, and that's something that's not being talked about. I want to mention one other thing that Sarah said uh, and I, I read in the paper, uh, actually on the web this morning. Let me let me do this, Logan. Logan, let me do this because um, we're coming back to you. Let me give Sarah a chance for her final comments on this topic. Sarah. Absolutely. I wanted to speak just briefly. As a college student, I'm really seeing the effects of this. Um, I don't think K-12 education is built for men to succeed as boys. They are disciplined for being hyperactive and uh, disruptive, things like that. And little girls fit that system. They can sit down, they can be quiet. And I'm someone who K-12 education in the public schools worked well for. And even I am still unlearning a lot of the damaging bad habits mm. that that education uh, instilled in me. Well, listen, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experience. Um,